Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. I'm Six down from M-Wave. I hope you're keeping rugged up during this frosty winter. Now I'm going to be taking you through 10 tips you didn't know about Windows 10. So step one, the hidden start menu. So the first few tips are going to be really easy and quick and then we're going to get into things a little bit more complicated as we progress through. So this one's simple, you just go to the bottom left where the Windows icon is and you right click it and you found it, the hidden start menu. So this pretty much acts as a dumbed down control center and settings panel which means you can find things really quickly without having to go through the nooks and crannies of your PC. Step 2, removing discretionary apps. Now if you go to the bottom left here on the Windows icon again and left click, you'll see a bunch of tiles. So you might see things you're not quite using, maybe Disney or maybe the weather or the fitness app. So what you do is you go to this cogwheel on the left, settings, you go to apps, it'll automatically take you to apps and features on the left here. Now this has everything displayed. So let's say we don't want to use health and fitness. You click that, you click uninstall, and it instantly uninstalls any apps that you don't want to be using on your operating system. Number three, disabling P2P downloads. Now if you haven't already questioned and thought, what the heck are P2P downloads? Well, it's Windows peer-to-peer -peer networking service, which means they're downloading updates from other people all across the world, and this helps Windows prevent their servers getting flooded from everybody across the globe trying to download a Windows update all at the same time. Now, this is all well and good if you're uncapped and you're not worried about data, but if you are getting close to your data limit cap, this is how to prevent going rolling over and automatically updating from P2P. So you go to the bottom left of the Windows icon again, you click the settings cog, you want to go to update and security. Right here, you got Windows Update. You want to click Advanced Options. Then you want to go to Delivery Optimization. Now you have a better explanation of what P2P is here. I've already got it clicked off, but that's what it looks like when it's on. So you want to come down here and just click that to off. And there you go. You're not going to be downloading from other users across the world. And you are in control of what you're downloading again. Number four. Speeding up your PC. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to make you at 780 Ti run like a 1080. I can't make magic happen, but I can make your computer run just a little bit smoother. So you go down to Cortana here, and you click in Adjust the Appearance and Performance of Windows. This will open up this little panel here, and you can control all the kind of customizations and appearance of what your computer is seeing. So if anything's slowing it down, you can switch it off or adjust it however you need. Now number two, we go back to Cortana and we type in choose a power plan. There we go. So you want to be clicked on high performance. Now be wary if you are on a laptop, if you go high performance, this will chew through your battery. It'll be like ice cream melting in a hot Californian sun. So just be wary of that. Now last but not least, open up just a little file explorer window here. Now, on the right hand side, you're going to be typing in size and you want to go huge. It'll come up with every single item that's in the huge category, which is in around the 20 megabyte mark. So if there's anything unnecessary, you can go through there and just delete that. But let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go size gigantic. Now we're looking at the hundreds. So if there's anything that you aren't using or you're thinking, why is this here? You can easily delete it, clear up some space, and make your computer just run that extra little bit quicker. Number five, command prompt tweaks. Now we've just hit the halfway mark, so we're getting just a little bit more complicated, but don't panic. This is for your simple command prompt, and we're just looking at making it just a little bit more aesthetic, man. We're just making it a little bit more cleaner, man. So what you do, is you type CMD in Cortana. Now you right click the command prompt that'll pop up the top here. Open file location, and you find the command prompt file. You right click it, and it's not so much of a secret, but you go properties, and here we go. You can pick layouts, fonts, options, cursor size, small, medium, large, all those type of things. And it just helps you break down and organize your command prompt just a little bit more clearly. Step number six, creating my God folder. 
that was my bad impression of Morgan Freeman. All right, great. So what is a God folder? Well, the name is exactly what it states. So what you do is you right click and you go new folder. Now I'm gonna pop just below here what you have to type exactly. For me, I'm just gonna control V for the sake of time. So please pause this video if you need to. So that's a lot of it there. And you have to click enter. Just like that, we've got ourselves in a control panel icon now. Now double click it. Now just as this name suggests, you are playing God for your Windows operating system because you now have access to pretty much every single setting in your Windows operating system. So I can't make you God in real life, but in your Windows, I can make your dreams come true. Step seven, installing the Linux subsystem. Now for you Linux users out there, just as a quick disclaimer, the subsystem doesn't allow you to graphically run apps. No, it's there for you to maybe administer servers or things like that. So if you are looking to install it, this is what you do. You go to the bottom left to the windows, you go to your settings. Now you go down to your update and security and you go to for developers. Now you want to have developer mode ticked on. Typically it'll have sideload apps, but you tick developer mode. Now you get out of that, we go to Cortana, and we go Control Panel. Click Control Panel. Now we go to Programs. Now we wanna to go to Turn Windows Features On or Off. You click that, this little box opens. So you scroll down until you find Windows Subsystem for Linux. You click that, and if you go OK, it'll searching for required files. I'm not gonna do it right now because what happens is it restarts and Windows downloads the Linux subsystem from the web store. And there you go. You've got yourself a very nice Linux subsystem. Step eight, getting back the classic start menu. Now classic might mean different things for different people. For you, it might be Windows 7, maybe Windows 8, or maybe even Windows XP. Now to get this back, what you do is you do have to download an external application. So let's say you go to your web browser, you type in classicshell.net, there we go. It brings you to the download page. You download it, automatically starts downloading. You show and folder, and then we start to download. So next, I accept, etc., etc., etc. So you install, you restart your PC, and what you end up with was something a little bit closer to these menus here. So instead of doing your classic Windows 10 with the tiles, you go back in time and visit an old friend. Step number nine, dynamic locking your PC. So if you don't know what dynamic locking is, allow me to try make sense of it through a circumstance. So let's say you're uh, working for the Australian Federal Police, dealing with sensitive material every single day but you're a busy boy with a bad habit bad habit for not locking your pc ever i mean come on man this is sensitive material so here's how we can lock it without you having to manually do it every single time so if you have a let's say a mobile phone with bluetooth capabilities and your pc has mobile bluetooth capabilities as well you can actually sync those products together and they act and communicate. And if let's say you walk away from your PC, your PC goes, oh, the phone's going out of range. And then it automatically locks. So this is how you dynamically lock your PC. So we go to the bottom left and we go to the settings cog. Now we wanna go up to devices. Now this automatically takes us to Bluetooth and other devices. And we wanna to go to add Bluetooth or other device. Then you go add Bluetooth. Now, unfortunately, my PC doesn't have Bluetooth connectivity, but if yours does, you should find your phone right here, you connect up and you go from there. Then we go backwards and we go to accounts. We wanna to go to sign in options right in the middle here. Scroll down. Now, what it should look like, it should be unticked for the dynamic lock. So windows can lock when devices paired to your PC go out of range. So you wanna tick it. There we go. You've got dynamic locking activated. Mine doesn't work, 
but yours, my friend, yours does. So step number 10, and our final step today, is playing Xbox through your PC. So if you go to the bottom left to find your tiles there, you'll find the Xbox One tile. Now you can either click that direct, or you can pin it to your taskbar there for ease of access. But what you do is once you click that, it starts loading up the Xbox Live page. Now you have to have an Xbox Live account, or it will ask you to sign in. Now we're in the gritty part, so you've got the Xbox app up. You go to the bottom left where the connect you to your Xbox One option is. Now there should be a list of networks and devices and you click your Xbox. Of course the Xbox has to be on for this to read. We go back to the home icon and we see game streaming, your Xbox that should be connected and a list of games recently played. So what you do is you hover over your recently played games, click anyone you want and you go play from console. Instantly this little UI comes up connecting and then from there, you can play your Xbox straight from your Windows 10. And that concludes our little time together today. So thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully it's been clear, concise, and quite useful. I'm Six Down. A big thank you from myself and M-Wave. And have yourself a very warm rest of your winter.